Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude this study of the supremacy of the King James Bible. This is part two of two. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. And that's where the evangelicals put a period. That's not where Paul stopped. He said, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Amen. And avoid them. Amen. You see, we take a stand on doctrine. And we say, no, if you believe in a work salvation, we can't join with you. If you deny the Trinity, we can't join with you. If you insist on a Saturday Sabbath and that eating meat is a sin, I rebuke you. Amen. Get out of here. <laughs> See, because the Bible says none of that stuff's true. So we're not going to unify with people who are going to preach wrong doctrine. But who's causing the division? Hello. Listen. I want, I want you to get this. Who is causing the division? Amen. It's the people teaching false doctrine, not us who say, no, we're not going to go along with your false doctrine. Right. They will accuse you and me of being the source of division because we won't go along with their error. Amen. And the Bible says, no, you Bible believers, you mark them Amen. who teach the error. And you do the avoiding. Right. See? So, I got news for the evangelical, the, the, the typical, you know, I'm sorry, but the typical Nazarene, the typical Seventh-day Adventist, the typical Grace Brethren, the reason why you don't have to worry about me is because I'm not trying to unify with you because you're in sin. Right. Your churches are involved in sin and your churches declare false doctrine. Now the Grace Brethren I could get along with if they would practice biblical separation. But they want to join up with all these, you know, and they'll have, they get involved in, now it's all kinds of crazy stuff. They get, you know, uh, all the ecumenical movements and everything. So that's why we don't, you don't have to worry about me. You don't have to worry about even, you know, me trying to come in and get along with you guys because I'm over here saying, repent! Then we might get along. But I'm just doing what I'm told. Amen. Just doing what I'm told. And we're falsely accused of causing division over doctrine, and that's the thing I want you to get. That is an exact perversion of the truth. Amen. You see, they are causing the division, but they're blaming you. They're blaming me. I, I've been told there's... I don't think every preacher in the county knows me, and I don't care. But I've been told there are some who do. And they're well aware of where I stand, and that's why they don't want anything to do with me. And my response is, good, you just saved me a hassle. Because if that's where you stand, if I were to try to get along with you, we'd have problems. I'd be looking at you and say, you're a compromiser, you need to repent. And I'm sorry, I mean, I... I I would say it nicely. I would be as nice as I could be, but I've done it and I will continue to do it. Now, there's been a couple of times where I stood in front of a bunch of old geezers who compromised the book, stood in front of a board, about half of them were Freemasons one time. And I, I, the Bible says not to rebuke an elder, but an elder isn't a Freemason. And I rebuked them. And I've stood in front of another board uh, that was lying and cheating and violating their own bylaws and all that. And I rebuked them. And uh, took my ordination papers for the Free Will Baptist down there in Southern Ohio. I burned it and I put it in an envelope and I mailed it to them. I left my signature. That's the part I didn't burn. The word ordination and my signature. The rest was burned. And that's what needs to happen. And there's just so few preachers and so few Christians that will take a stand for this book. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing around the, the country. And England. England is a fascist country. Amen. That's right. 
did you know that England is wanting to ban, uh, there is a movement in England to ban Franklin Graham? Wow. Because he preaches the truth about Islam. Wow. Bunch of fascists. Yeah, King James Version translated in England, and they, they're like, take it. We will. <laughs> Amen. If the book is above the name of God, it's also above unity. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. King James Supreme. It's head and shoulders above all other books. And the King James is supreme. I've got to move quickly. I've Got some stuff here I want to say. The King James Bible is supreme on technical terms. In English, I don't try to fix the Spanish and the German and the Russian, you know. Not that Charlie's Russian, but um, <laughs> he read a book about him one time. And so I always look at him and I say Russian. But, <laughs> but we're talking about, is everybody here speak English? Not the yeah. Somewhat. Yeah, you're you're good at it. You're, but <laughs> you're better than most Americans at it, actually. But but uh, in English, only the King James Bible conforms to the Bible used by all believers throughout church history. Amen. Did you get that? It's a mouthful. It's the Apostolic Bible. We got this book from the Masoretic Hebrew Old Testament text and the Greek Received text. The Hebrew Masoretic text is, is the text that Jews used before Jesus and then on. If the Dead Sea Scrolls we talked about that predate Jesus Christ, those manuscripts found in the Qumran caves match our Masoretic Hebrew Bible, which is translated right here in English. That Greek received text is the text, goes back, it's called Byzantine and Antioch text, that is the text that Christians always used for their Bibles until 1888. So, we have the Apostolic Bible. We have a Bible that in English represents what they were using when Jesus was on earth and what was completed by the year 105 A.D. with the writings of the Apostles. Now, i got to... I just I got to give you a, a quick rundown on this, but you need to understand these things. The King James Bible is superior to new versions, the NIV and the rest. A, because it was translated from superior text, which I just told you. The Masoretic Hebrew Old Testament, Amen. the Received Greek New Testament, are the texts that Christians have always used for the Bible, whether it was in Old Italic, whether it was in the uh, Italic Valdois. Uh, Bible, the uh, German Bible uh, that Luther translated, and so forth. Other languages used those texts, and we've used it in this since 1611, and it's got an unbroken trail right back to the uh, apostles. And we can talk about manuscript evidence, that the uh, number of manuscripts that back up our King James Bible are into the thousands, whereas all new versions are really based on one, the Codex Vaticanus, with edits from Sinaiticus, Alexandrinus, and then some other sources just in a few places. But the main base text is the Vatican Bible. And our King James Bible comes from superior texts. It's also, it was translated by superior translators. There are at least, uh, Lawrence Vance wrote, as far as I know, probably the best book. Does anybody, do you know of a, another book besides Lawrence Vance on the King James translators? No, he much. Lawrence Vance wrote a book, I think it's King James and its translators, I think is the name of the book. King James' Bible and its translators. Just remember Vance, V-A-N-C-E, if you want to read about it. Now, these guys didn't learn Greek and Hebrew in college. Amen. They did it for fun when they beginning when they were just a little older than Gloria. That's right. These guys, when they went to college, they weren't learning Greek and Hebrew. They were writing letters to each other in Greek and Hebrew. Yeah, that's right. They could converse in dead languages. One, one guy went on vacation for six weeks to learn a whole different language. Yeah, they, and they, they, knew, they were like linguists. They just would learn languages in a matter of weeks. 
an amazing thing. Today's translators can't touch that. And like I said, they all use these lexicons and commentaries. They don't actually... Now, they, some of them will study and come up with their own ideas and everything, but it's not because they know the language. And C, they also, those translators, used a superior technique. Amen, that's right. When they translated from Hebrew and Greek, they gave the actual translation as literal as possible. Right. Now, in the new versions, and that book by David Daniels explains in detail how that, this came to pass, but what the King James translators use is something called formal equivalency. Amen. Equivalent. You hear that word in there? Equivalent. Formal means it's just literal as close as can be. The new versions use a thing called dynamic equivalence. It's similar to how liberals treat the Constitution. Right. Yeah. It's, it's exactly, they treat the Constitution, they say it's a living, breathing document, which means we can make it say whatever we want to. We can find abortion in there. We can find gay marriage in there. And even though it says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed, we can find in there where it says that it can be infringed. That's a liberal, a liar. And that's the kind of translators you have in the new versions. They are, some of them are theologically claimed to be conservative, but they treat the Bible like liberals. The King James translators didn't do that. And D, it resulted in superior theology. Uh, I'm going to mention that as we go on, so I won't belabor that point. In English, the King James Bible is the only translation without this. Yep. It's the only Bible without a copyright. That's right. mm -hmm. You say, well, what's that mean? It's a warning. Unauthorized use of new versions is illegal. That's true. I wish I had kept it. I don't know what happened to it. But they buried this story. It happened back when uh, Mariah was a little girl. A entire shipload of NIVs translated into Jap J Japanese um, floated into port in Japan. The owners of the NIV stopped the ship and made it go back. Wow. Because they had not paid the fee That's to wild. translate their NIV into Japanese. And that kind of stuff's been going on for years. And listen, it's right there for anybody who wants to see it. If you go to um, Bible Gateway, you can look at the copyright information. And you can see right here it says the ESV, copyright information. Um, the ESV, um, where is that there? The second paragraph. Let's see. Yeah, this, remember I told you it's copyright um, but the Division of Ed Christian Education of the National Council of Churches of Christ USA, a communist organization. And then it says um, uh, you have to, it, I'll just read it real quick. It says, when quotations from the ESV text are used in non sellable media, such as church bulletins and everything, you can use it, but you must. Um, uh, Put the initials ESV behind it, That's and which is we would do that with the King James version, just to let everybody know for sure they're getting it from the King James. <laughs> then it goes down to say that um, publication of any commentary or other Bible reference work produced for commercial sale that uses the ESV must include written permission for use of the ESV text. That tells you something. With the King James, you only need God's permission. Amen. With the ESV, you have to have written permission, and you have to write good news publishers, attention, Bible rights. 1300 Crescent Street. That sounds Muslim. Wheaton, <laughs> Illinois, 60187. And then uh, here's the NIV. They call it the proper use statement. And uh, listen to what it says on their website. These scriptures have been made available on the internet for your personal use only. 
No. <laughs> any other use, including but not limited to copying or reposting the scripture on the internet, wow. is prohibited. Wow. <laughs> These scriptures may not be altered or modified in any form, which is legit. Uh, it goes on to say, uh, for the purpose of online access, these scriptures may not be sold or otherwise offered for sale. Um, the use of commercial online advertisement is strictly prohibited with the display of the biblical online scripture resource. Okay, now here it says, when do I need permissions? The NIV or NIRV, which I think, is that their gender neutral one? <laughs> may be quoted in any form up to an inclusive of 500 verses. Oh, okay. That's a tiny percentage of the Bible. Without express written permission of the publisher, providing the verses quoted do not amount to a complete book of the Bible. Oh, man. Nor do the verses quoted account for more than 25% of the work that you uh, total text. And so for then additional, right, it says right under that copyright, all content, oh no, that's, that's about the website. Just do math. <laughs> so, no, no copying too. <laughs> so, in other words, if you're going to use an NIV, <laughs> you better be very careful. Because it, and there have been lawsuits. They have brought lawsuits against Christians. And here, what they do is they, what they say is, uh, well, it's not us, it's our lawyers. We don't have anything to do with that. It's our legal team. Because the Bible says not to sue other Christian brothers. So they say, well, we don't really, you know, it's those crooked lawyers. We don't have anything to do with that. So the King James Bible is... Let me say it again, Supreme, because you can take this King James Bible, you can copy it, you can give it away, you can sell it. Yeah. And you don't have to have anybody's permission but God's. It's Supreme on practical terms. The King James Bible is the target of Bible rejectors. This is the kind of thing you see. This is just yesterday. They announced an ancient forbidden Christian text of Jesus' secret teachings to his brother James was found. They want you to believe that the King James, that, that's the whole Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code thing and all that. They want you to believe that there was some big conspiracy to keep these other books out of the Bible. They don't want you to know the truth. Now, they kept out of the Bible because almost all of them were written by fakes. That's right. They were written by people who pretended to be someone they're not. Like the book of Enoch was not written by Enoch. And uh, the... Uh, Acts of Pontius Pilate was not written by Pontius Pilate and so forth. And Christians said, no, that's junk. No, that's junk. And, but, oh, First Peter, that's good. Bring that in. Oh, yeah, of course, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. I mean, we've already been using those as Scripture. We believe they're Scripture. And they came together. And before uh, the apostles were even dead, the Bible was settled upon by most Bible-believing Christians. And uh, there's... Um, references and information about that. But what they want you to believe is that uh, there's all these books and the King James just isn't complete. Well, here's why we reject the first apocalypse of James, as it's called. First, it was written after all the apostles were dead. So obviously there wasn't an apostolic author. Is dated as being older than the second apocalypse of John. <laughs> uh, of James, I'm sorry, it should say the second apocalypse of James. And then it injects, and here's how you know, there's an agenda behind these books. They inject it with Roman Catholic ideas. And they injected it with the baseless and contradictory claim that Jesus looked at James and said, I mean, why would he even say this? You are materially not my brother. Why? Because the Catholic Church teaches the perpetual virginity of Mary. And they teach that Jesus didn't actually have brothers and sisters. And when you see that in the Bible, it means cousins, and so and so forth. So that's why we rejected the apocalypse of James, and we were we reject all those extra books. We have all of God's word in our King James Bible. Amen. It's not missing 
Any books. And when people say there are missing books, no, they're rejected books. They'll say they're forbidden books. No, they're rejected books. Amen. Just keep the terminology correct. The King James Bible is recognized by presidents. Uh, unlike the uh, new versions, it's always been honored um, up until recently, up until Bill Clinton. It was honored by presidents. Uh, here's, listen to this from Ronald Reagan. I don't know if you've heard this before. What would you say if someone decided that Shakespeare's plays, Charles Dickens' novels, or the music of Beethoven could be rewritten and improved? I'll be right back. Writing in the journal The Alternative, Richard Hanser, author of The Law of the Prophets and Jesus, What Manner of Man Is This, has called attention to something that is more than a little mind-boggling. It's my understanding that the Bible, both the Old and New Testaments, has been the best-selling book in the entire history of printing. Now another attempt has been made to improve it. I say another because there have been several fairly recent efforts to, quote, make the Bible more readable and understandable, unquote. But as Mr. Hanser so eloquently says, for more than three and a half centuries, its language and its images have penetrated more deeply into the general culture of the English-speaking world and been more dearly treasured than anything else ever put on paper. He then quotes the irreverent H.L. Mencken, who spoke of it as purely a literary work, and said it was probably the most beautiful piece of writing in any language. They were, of course, speaking of the authorized version, the one that came into being when the England of King James was scoured for translators and scholars. It was a time when the English language had reached its peak of richness and beauty. Now we're to have the Good News Bible, which will be in, quote, the natural English of everyday adult conversation. Well, I'm sure the scholars and clergymen supervised by the American Bible Society were sincerely imbued with the thought that they were taking religion to the people with their good news Bible. But I can't help feeling we should instead be taking the people to religion and lifting them with beauty of language that has outlived the centuries. Mr. Hanser has quoted from both the St. James Version and the Good News Bible some well-known passages for us to compare. A few thousand years ago, Job said, Listen. How forcible are right words. The new translators would have him saying, honest words are convincing. That's only for openers. There is the passage, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Is it really an improvement to say instead, the wiser you are, the more worries you have, the more you know, the more it hurts. In the New Testament, according to Matthew, we read, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way. The Good News Version translates that into Someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready. It sounds like a straw boss announcing lunch hours over. The hauntingly beautiful 23rd Psalm is the same in both versions for a few words. The Lord is my shepherd. But instead of continuing with a I shall not want, we're supposed to say, I have everything I need. The Christmas story has undergone some modernizing, but one can hardly call it an improvement. The wondrous words... Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Has become, don't be afraid, I'm here with good news for you. The sponsors of the good news version boast that their Bible is as readable as the daily paper, and so it is. But do readers of the daily news find themselves moved to wonder, quote, at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, unquote. Mr. Hanser suggests that sadly, the tinkering and general horsing around with the sacred text will no doubt continue as pious drudges try to get it right. It will not dawn on them that it has already been gotten right. Amen. This is Ronald Reagan. Thanks for listening. It has already been gotten right. Amen. This is one I don't know if you're aware of, but the King James Bible was the first to travel into space. Did you know that? Tiny Apollo 13 Bible is up for auction if you got a few million and you want to buy a copy, Doug. That's uh, Fred Heiss Jr., James Lovell Jr., and Jim Swigert Jr. being pictured there. There's what it looks like. It's a micro form. Yeah? And uh, this one went, almost went to the moon and back. It, you remember? A tiny King James Bible that went to space on the famous Apollo 13 mission is up for auction this week. The mission was famously depicted in the successful 90, 1995 movie, Apollo 13, starring Tom Hanks. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah. Um, it says the microform Bible was issued by the Apollo Prayer League to the crew that embarked on the storied mission. 
Apollo 13 launched on April 11, 1970, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they took, uh, it says the explosion in an oxygen tank, however, placed the crew in intense danger and forced them to scrub their planned lunar landing. But uh, that's pretty amazing stuff there. And the King James Bible is supreme, and this is where we'll close, on personal terms. Um, the King James Bible is the Bible of Bible readers. We've mentioned this before, but the USA Today published this story. Bible readers prefer a King James Version. It says, this is, their, this is their words. If thou hast a Bible in the house right now, and readeth it at least once a month, Chances are strong it's the majestic King James Version of the Bible in Elizabethan English, a new survey, survey out today finds. Now this was 2011. They said, listen to this, of the 89% of U.S. adults who own at least one Bible, 67% own a King James Bible. And uh, this says, although there are two dozen English language Bibles in many contemporary translations, and that's just part of what's out there. The King James Version reigns even more supreme among those who actually read their Bibles. 82% of those who read the good book at least once a month. That's how low they set the bar. 82% who read the Bible once a month rely on the translation that first brought the Scripture to the English-speaking masses worldwide. And it goes on. Think of that. Of all the people who, whether you could read it every day or just once a month, of all those people, 82% of those who do read a Bible read the King James. You want to know why? Because if you're a Christian, you have the Spirit of God in you. Amen. And when you read the Bible, the King James Bible, you know it's God's Word. And when you pick up an NIV or one of those new ones, you know there's no power. And that's why you don't pick it up. That's why people don't read them. They buy them. They got, you know, people buy them in different colors, different, you know, a woman's study Bible, mother's study Bible, softball team study Bible. You know, I'm not kidding you. They got them for everything. A graduate's study Bible. Yes. You know, a veterinarian technician study Bible. I, I haven't actually seen that one yet. I bet yeah. they have an electrician study Bible out there somewhere. And the King James Bible is the Bible of revival. Mm -hmm. And Matthew 7, 16, 17, remember Jesus said, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Amen. Do men gather grapes of thorns or th figs of thistles? Every, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's specifically talking about the prophets. Specifically talking about the prophets. And the new versions... Vatican versions, they're producing apostasy. Since new versions started infecting the Christian church, apostasy has begun to set in. The King James Bible is my Bible. Amen. I hope it's your Bible. It's my Bible. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And I can tell you, this is just my personal testimony, you can take it or leave it. When I was using an NIV, I was faltering. I was struggling. But when I got a hold of a King James Bible and my faith was built up in the King James Bible, it's been no, no looking back. And I can tell you today that if you right now have your faith in this book and you really allow this book to be a part of your daily life. You read it, you study it, you memorize it, you share it with others. The, the only way that you will ever fall and fail in your relationship with the Lord is when you put the book down. <laughs>